Welcome back. It is Thursday, September 7th, and the MLB are three. Favorite picks are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday. A one and three day down about a one and a half units. The Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros over eight and a half was again free. The Astros are hot and they're cooking. That was a sweat free winner. Braves minus one and a half first five. That was a sweat free loser. As Spencer Strider has, I think, his worst start of the year. Thanks for that. Christian Walker over one and a half bases. I swear, if you ever see the guy that we take for bases get a single in his first at bat, just hammer the under. We're like 0 in 100 when that happens because they never get it done. I mean, the, the D backs were 12 runs and he could not get another hit. And then our Dimers hit parlay, did miss, just failed all around. A one in three day, you know, down to one and a half units. We only play the parlay for half a unit. But either way, we're bouncing back today. It's the NFL is back. We posted our Lions and Chiefs best bets video last night. Definitely go check it out. We got a player prop spread pick and an underdog fantasy entry over there. So go check out that video's post before this one. I'll link it at the end as well as down below in the pinned comment and the description. Definitely go check it out. The NFL, we're hyped for it to be back. We had we were up 23 units last year. We're up 40 something the year before. Hopefully we have a big year again in the NFL. And speaking of the NFL, points bet, we've talked about their offer that they got going right now where you can spend, if you bet, if you sign up using our top link in the description, you face a $50 money line or cash bet on anything that's minus 500 odds or, or better. You get a $150 Fanatics voucher to, to use on a jersey. So a lot of you guys have been sending your jerseys in our dub club. I saw someone buy a Justin Jefferson jersey, which used to be in for a big year. But all those details down below for points bet are there, available in a ton of different U.S. states. And they also have a bunch of different markets, markets that FanDuel and other books don't have, especially for the MLB. But without further ado, Logan, we got three picks. You got two of them. Your first one is going back to the scene of the crime. What's it going to be? I'm going back to the scene of the crime. And I just want to mention this one. The nice thing about this this game yesterday, we got to turn it off. And we knew it was a loser as soon as Spencer Strider uh, allowed all those runs in the first inning. Uh, but And it was also the squarest uh, bet on the slate. Naturally, this is why I like to be a contrarian, because everyone and their mother on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. All the fade gods were with Austin and I, and not a good place to be. But today, I'd be surprised if they're on this specific play. It's Adam Wainwright, over three and a half earned runs, minus 115 odds on DraftKings. Currently your best value there. Now, it's this specific prop bet is available on several books. You got DraftKings, Bet, MGM, and Caesar. So don't don't act like this is some niche bet that, that uh, you know, we're, we're taking the try to skirt the system no it's not and i would play this one to, to minus 130 i wouldn't really go anything more juice than that but if you want to pivot if your book simply doesn't have this market i would go back to the bet that we lost yesterday braves first five run line it's a good rule of thumb anyway when we lose a pick just run back the, the same pick the next day because normally that's that's how it's been working this year for us when we miss it it's the next day or just a day early but out of all the game the ways to back the braves today because i want to back them in some way i'm like Clearly, you know, back in their pitching is not it because the Cardinals are, are really hot. I think this one's the safest, uh, you know, as, as as far as backing them. We, we look at this game it, where we look at how Adam Wainwright's fared. And in his last six starts, he's went over this line in four of them. Coming off a start where he allowed eight hits, uh, three walks, and only one run to the Padres. I mean, if, if you look at that, he, I, I think he got quite lucky. Only eight hits, three walks, and only one run of damage. That's kind of the San Diego Padres way of doing things this year. Uh, but now, you know, he's he's facing the Braves. And if we look at how the, he's fared at the season. It's been a rough one for, for old man Wainwright. 8.67 ERA and a 1.9 whip. You know, this, he's facing an Atlanta offense. It's second in runs, third in hits at home. This team is is hitting 280 at home this season. They're just a juggernaut offensively. And yes, yesterday, yes, they were they were in a hole, but before we could even you know get out of that hole. But I, I think today is is the day where where they really you know break the bats out against Adam Wainwright and make him pay for mistakes. And Braves versus Wainwright in their career, 120 plate appearances, 18 percent K percentage, 321 batting average, and a 305 expected batting average. Even the expected numbers are expecting Wainwright to get hit today. And that actually includes a couple of their best hitters actually haven't done well historically versus Wainwright. Acuna 0 for 8, Olsen 1 for 8. But you know what? Those were the Wainwrights of old. I promise you he's not the pitcher he was a few years ago. He just, he, he isn't. To me, he's unrecognizable. I've watched a lot of him in his career. And the reason why he's still pitching into his late years is because he's still chasing that 200th career win. And good luck to him. Bless his heart. Because it's, it's going to be really tough, you know, in, in this one. But because he is chasing that career milestone, let's say maybe he's given up two or three runs. It's somewhat close. They will leave him in, right? The, 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 I would be really surprised if the Cardinals yank Adam Wainwright before the damage is done in this one. If we look at if we look at Adam Wainwright's stat cast numbers too, 
they're the worst I've ever seen. I, I'm quite honestly, I've never seen anything like it. Wainwright, first percentile on expected batting average and expected ERA, first percentile on whiff and K percentage. Just, you know, for future reference, first percentile is the absolute worst. You can't get any worse than that. He, he just is not missing bats. He's walking a lot of people. He's not striking anybody out. His K props like two and a half or, or something ridiculously low. To me, there's no reason why the Braves shouldn't tag Wayne with at least four runs. The only thing standing in our way with an earned runs prop is weather. And, you know, it's we check the weather, looks pretty decent, and unearned runs. I mean, unearned runs, I cannot predict an error, so don't come out of my head. If they get three on Wayno and one of them was unearned, that would be pain, but I still really like it today. But Austin, you got a hit parlay for us? What you going with? Yeah, I'm going to dive right into it, but first I want to put out a challenge for myself. If Wayno goes six innings pitch and allows zero earned runs, I will be buying his jersey. I, I, I will do it. I'll do it because I just don't see it happening with those stats. But knowing our luck, he's going to go out there and he's getting a win tonight. But either way, I really like the pick. I think Wayno's giving up some runs. And I'm actually going to be back in a Brave here today plus a Dodger because I'm going to a hit parlay. I'm taking Mookie Betts and Austin Riley each to record a hit. Currently minus 109 on Bet365. Next best odds, you're seeing minus 127 on FanDuel. If you are drafting better, how I always say to do it is take the person that I'm talking about to get a hit. That would be Mookie Betts. Take his team total's lowest line, which is 0.5, just the Dodgers to score. Then also might, don't mind Austin Riley to get a hit. And obviously the Braves team total, which I think was two and a half. But then you get that minus 116. And honestly, base props, I feel like we we keep getting a guy to get a single and then they just don't get it done. It's just agonizing having to wait all game. So I'd rather just ask these guys to just get a single. I don't care if they get a single, double, triple home run. I don't care how they get it done. I just want to hit. And I think we've done great at targeting those matchups. We just can't get those two bases, which obviously can be a little fluky. But I love both matchups here as both of these two teams are trying to avoid being swept by their respective opponents. We're talking about Mook though he's hitless in the last two games now he's been i think he got yanked early yesterday but still was 0 for 2 with a walk and he's i just expect him to bounce back i mean this is mookie bets he's been so good this year batting 313 on the year he's facing back to braxton garrett a lefty Look at Garrett. They've seen each other before. Two for four lifetime with two home runs, which is why you might see people on his base prop. But I don't care if he hits a home run today. I just want a single. And Garrett has been struggling at home and especially to right-handed batters, allowing a 267 batting average to righties and a 281 batting average in general, lefties and righties at home. So this guy that's been struggling to miss righty bats and also been struggling at home where he finds himself today. I think Mookie Betts will have a great chance to get it done here. I mean, the last time we saw him go two straight games without a hit, bounce back with three hits. And teams, normally, I mean, Mookie might walk more often than not i mean he's gonna walk sometimes not like an era judge where he walks like three times in the game but also you got freddie freeman behind him and freddie obviously it invokes a little fear into the other team's heart he's don't really want to put base runners on there because we know how good freddie freeman is at getting those doubles extra base hits and whatnot especially against lefties so i think he'll get pitches to hit here and while i won't bring up all the pitches that you know garrett's gonna throw because he throws six of them if you look at the six pitches that he does throw mookie 292 batting average or better against five of those pitches the only one he kind of struggles against is the changeup. you know you look at garrett only throws that 12 percent of the time so really like Mookie Betts at least get us a single get us a hit today he's been pretty clutch for us when we need him Freddie I couldn't say the same thing but I think Mookie will get us a hit here today now next up is going to be our COS Hall of Famer Austin Riley and great first name and we've already talked about Wainwright but hopefully Austin Riley is doing some damage and the best thing I love about uh Wayno is he doesn't throw a lot of fastballs which we'll touch on in a second but look we talk about Austin Riley back 274 in the year we love to back him at home or he's back near 300 299 to be exact hopefully he goes up to 300 after today but he's seen Wayno before he's helped to that average Logan talked about above three three for eight 375 versus Wayno I think two singles and a double if I'm not mistaken and that was against a better version of Wayno than he will see today Logan already gave you the stat cast numbers they aren't very very good but Wayno like I said not a lot of fastballs like 11 12 percent of the time the other time he's throwing a lot of curveball cutter and sinker look at them 32 30 and 25 percent and those are Riley's best pitches to hit 351 300 and 302 batting average against those three respective pitches look I'm pretty confident Austin Riley can get the job done get us a hit so can Mookie Betts and I'm confident both these two teams are probably going to win today but I won't recount on their team to win just need a hit from each of these two fellows hopefully Austin Riley sends a grand slam to cash Logan's but I don't care how he gets it done I love the picks I love this one we're riding with the hit parlay but Logan you got a, a th second pick third pick of the video to wrap it up where are we going to end it yeah we've been pretty solid on full game uh, over unders so I'm going to go ahead and test my luck here with the Diamondbacks versus Cubs game and I'm taking the under eight and a half total runs minus 105 odds bet MGM currently your best value there now yes I know nobody likes when we pick unders I don't like when I pick an under either but I think it's actually the bet the best bet to make in this game specifically you could back the Cubs in some sort of way but 
I just th this this game's got just like real playoff implications. It's it's going to be really crazy. Even though the Cubs offense is humming, I still have to take the under here. The game is going to be a huge series for each teams as it's going to probably be managed like a playoff game. If you ever watch playoff baseball, you would know it's quite different than the regular season. The, the first sign of trouble from anyone, they get yanked. They they throw a lot of, you know, relievers in there, a lot of like you know different looks for for the team each side i think that's kind of what we see here and too and and also for you know we've talked about several times the weather conditions in wrigley play on the total so huge and according to ballpark pal the weather is unfavorable in this one minus 22 percent home runs and minus 15 percent in runs expected so hopefully the weather is on our side. Like I said, you don't take unders when the total set sky high at, at Wrigley. And I also think you don't take overs if it's set a little bit, you know, suspiciously low. And I think this one is kind of suspiciously low if we look at, you know, just the starting ERA of these pitchers, right? But let's start with the with the Cubs pitcher. Javier Assad is supposed to start for the Cubs. 3.55 ERA and a 1.38 whip at home for Assad. To me, it's not clear how long Assad's going to go in this game, but his ceiling for earned runs at home is usually like two earned runs. He really gives them a, a good ch uh, chance to win these games. He's not an ace pitcher, but he's pretty good at just going in there and doing his job. You'd have to go back to April to find a game where he's allowed more than two earned runs at home specifically. So he pitches pretty well at home, and he's probably, you know, maybe four or five innings type guy. You know, I'm not really sure how long he'll go into this game. But he faces an Arizona offense that we've, we saw them hitting 260 in their last three games, but that was against the Rockies, and that was against the worst pitching staff in the league, and they were also at home where they, they bat significantly better. And their last three road games, Arizona's only hitting 204. Look, I don't need to tell you, if you ever backed the Diamondbacks before, you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. And and it's I've seen a lot of bad and ugly with that offense, especially with runners in scoring position. I just don't really trust them to be able to get them home consistently. If we look at, a, you know, the, the to record a hit odds on Fandle, which is sort of the, the breadcrumbs Austin and I look at, you know, for player props and even totals for that matter. On Fandle, Corbin Carroll's minus 250 record a hit. The rest of the D-backs hitters are minus 195 or better. They're just not finding a whole lot of hits uh, to be had in this game, especially on the Diamondbacks side. So I think their bats might come out, you know, pretty slow in this one. I think it's going to be a, a, you know, grind it out type game. If we look at who starts for the Diamondbacks, it's Ryan Nelson. If you look at Ryan Nelson's ERA, you're like, Logan, so, such a high ERA. Well, weirdly enough, he actually has reverse splits on home and road. He's better on the on on the road, which is just weird to me. 3.3 ERA and a 1.11 whip on the road compared to an 8.59 ERA at home. I mean, wow. That's 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 pretty stark. And that's why his his average ERA is right split in the middle, you know, high at, at 6, but I I really do think if you look at Ryan Nelson, he's not going to be able to he's not going to sell them the game because he has allowed Six earned runs and back-to-back -back starts. Yet his earned run line is two and a half with plus value on the over. If that's just the, as if, if that earned run line is free as air, well then I know nothing. But I just I think they're going to yank him at the first sign of danger. As I mentioned, th this is must-win games for each of these these two teams. I'd be shocked if the Diamondbacks just let him stay out there and struggle. Right? They're going to come yank him if he if he walked a guy into into scoring position. They're probably going to be like, all right, three innings, dude, you're you're done. So I, I, once again, I don't think the damage is going to be all that that tough again, or all that yeah, great against Ryan Nelson. The Cubs hitting 305 in their last three home games. As I mentioned, I, they are peaking right now. Are they due the decline? Yes, because when, we know in baseball you can't hit 300 uh, all year long at home. It's just pretty unsustainable. And like Arizona, the Cubs hitters, to me, also have suspect to record hit odds. Because I look at these guys all day long. Nico Horner minus 300, that's, that's about average. But if you look at the rest of them, you're like, hmm, that's kind of low. They're like minus 220, minus 200-ish, like Bellinger, minus 210. I mean, th th those are normally lower for, for those types of guys. So again, could hits be hard to come by in this one? Sure, absolutely. And uh, look at over the last two weeks, the Cubs, ninth in bullpen ERA, Diamondbacks, 17th in bullpen ERA. Diamondbacks about middle of the pack. I I, I think their bullpen is, is good, not great. They're good enough to, to keep us under this under. Uh, and we also look at the Cubs bullpen. Ninth in bullpen ERA, as I mentioned. I mean, they're a top 10 bullpen. They have really good uh, bullpen arms to come and relieve Assad once he does come out of this game. I just think there aren't going to be a ton of runs scored on both sides. And really, uh, as I mentioned, the formula to cash the eight and a half, you know, you have two teams score four. But it, I, I just I don't see the runs coming, you know, early and often in this one. I think the under is the best bet to make in this one. I know Austin unders can be dicey, but I feel good about this one.
Yeah, and there's another note that we kind of looked at was the to record a home run odds. I mean, no one was more than plus 500, and you got some some heavy hitters in both of these lineups that can hit homers. So, like, I think this is a good spot to take the under eight and a half. There's a reason it dropped down after you know a ton of runs have been scored the last couple days in Wrigley. Let's just hope the weather is again on our side because we are not meteorologists. We could tell you the weather at 6:58 a.m. in the morning, but it could obviously change because there's about 12 hours before first pitch. But I really like that one. I think we got a good chance here. And those are our three favorite picks of the day. Let's go three and zero. Let's bring out the broom tomorrow morning of course if you want to check out our lions versus chiefs video go check it out we also have a second channel video about when you go into a tropicana field game which is arguably one of my favorite videos i've ever recorded and posted it's also linked on the screen as well go show some love to the second channel help us get to a thousand subscribers there but let's have a great thursday let's cash these picks let's cash our thursday night football picks which you can find in that video and let's overall have a great day we'll see you guys back in on friday with some more picks we'll see you then peace